this they, they all sound the same but you can still put your own personal touch and for me the personal touch is me playing the guitar parts and I don't program them because there are a lot of composers out there that they just whack the same plugin the same uh, sample and they all sound the same so if you want to separate yourself try to do something with your samples and try to to be a little bit creative as well and make sure that it's not very quantized and it's not so rigid Hello guys and thank you for tuning in. My name is Antonio Carrizales from StockMusicLicensing.com. Now today I want to show you how to write a corporate track for music licensing. Now this is a classic uh, example of what a corporate track is. And uh, I'm using the elements of uh, similar music that you will hear on uh, libraries like Pond5 and Audio Jungle. Now keep in mind that uh, corporate music is not a genre really. Uh, it could be anything from pop to folk or uh, even electronic music. Now, corporate music, what it is, it's just pretty much something that it will be an uplifting uh, kind of track. It will be something that it will, the, the main uh, purpose is to engage the listener. And you have to think of this type of music is gonna be used in some kind of presentation or a video or a slideshow and, uh, or a commercial for that matter. So it could be used as well on training videos on uh, some kind of company. And uh, you have to visualize that all the time when you're actually composing corporate music. I just want to play you a track that I'm working on. Um, and, and it has all the elements of a, what a corporate track is, which is uh, that dotted uh, delay uh, electric guitar parts and some pianos and some other elements in the background. Again, there's many ways to do this. And uh, I'm just going to play very quickly so you see what I, what I mean by that. Uh, try to pay attention to the main instruments in this case, okay? So let me play it for you very quickly so you see what I mean. As you can see, or as you can hear, is uh, I have a different element here. And what I have first thing is the guitars. I have done a video of how I uh, start composing this kind of guitar parts. Uh, I'm a guitar player, so I like to to compose these uh, parts. And I'll put a link here above somewhere so you can see how I start writing this type of guitar parts. And um, you can program them. Uh, I have fellow composers and friends who are not guitarists themselves, so they actually just use a plugin. And uh, uh, it, it, this is a very, it's a, it's a characteristic. It's a very, almost like a trademark of a corporate track. Uh, is this kind of guitars bouncing uh, from left to right with this kind of like a delay, almost like a U2 kind of style, I guess you can say. And the other elements are just the pianos and the violins and then some very basic uh, drum parts. Now if you listen to the guitar parts here, uh, the main guitar parts are these two guitars here which are the left uh, and the right and I have a center one here as well. But it will sound something like this.
So that's the backbone of the track. That's how it starts with the pianos. So that's that's like the backbone of this composition. That's how I start uh, composing this type of music, and obviously I'm emphasizing a lot on the guitar playing, and um, I enjoy a lot doing this type of guitar uh, riffs, if you will, uh, play because they're not they're not so rigid, they're not so quantized. So if you're gonna use uh, programs or, or plugins. Uh, or samples to create this kind of guitars. Even when you do, uh, even if you play them, make sure that they're not very quantized. Make sure that they're a little bit loose and a little bit imperf uh, of an imperfection to make it a little bit sound more human. And at the same time, you pan one to the left and one to the right, and it creates that uh, wide stereo feel. I have uh, done, however, put one in the center as well. All of these are three different guitar parts, three separate channels. So one is being played to the left, one in the center and one into the right, and it will sound something like this. And they have all, they are all played. They're not copy. I'm not copying the the tracks. I'm not uh, duplicating, if you will. I'm actually uh, playing the real part over and over again. So in this case, I've done it three different takes, and. Uh, as as uh, much as I want to to get be on the beat, there's always this little imperfection plus the delay, and uh, and it creates that movement and which is intentional. I don't want it to be so rigid. I don't want it to be so quantized. Um, so that's the main riff, and everything else is just uh, supporting that idea. Uh, the piano part and the bass and all the drums and the hand claps. Um, and it's a very, it's a very simple uh, track. Not many tracks here, and I will probably bounce this uh, guitars to, to a left and right uh, guitar part or tracks. I wouldn't have them like this at this point because I'm still in the composition and arrangement set, uh, uh, part. Uh, I have them like this, but these three tracks most likely will become a, a stereo track and, and that because I will commit all of this to just a stereo track, so I won't have three separate tracks. And the same will be uh, set for the violins. I have three, two violins, two here, two others here. So all of these uh, violins and strings, I will as well compress them, not compress them, but just uh, bounce them or, or commit to just a single uh, stereo track to just make it uh, less. Uh, so uh, my point is that you don't have to, to have a million tracks. Uh, here I have 22 tracks so far, but this is like the raw elements all uh, dumped into the session. Uh, but you don't need that many really. It's just the the less less is uh, is more believe it or not especially when it comes down to corporate music and to royalty free libraries and um, this kind of tracks is is yes they they all sound the same but you can still put your own personal touch and for me the personal touch is me playing the guitar parts and I don't program them because there are a lot of composers out there that they just whack the same plugin the same uh, sample and they all sound the same. So if you want to separate yourself, try to do something with your samples and try to to be a little bit creative as well and make sure that it's not very quantized and it's not so rigid. So again, I hope this video is, is helpful to you. And uh, like I said, I've done a, a, a previous video some time ago about how I, I start composing this kind of guitar parts. And uh, I'll leave the link in the description or somewhere around here so you can go and check out that the video, how I start this process. And uh, remember, the name of the game is to keep it simple. Uh, it's not supposed to be that complicated. So if you have a guitar part uh, program or play like this, uh, you're halfway there. Then after that, it's just a matter of, uh, of really putting uh, different elements that you might want, like uh, strings or some piano parts. And uh, obviously in this track, I'm still working on it. I've just gone all the way down to, to the break part, if you will and then it will repeat itself, but so far so good. So far at, at least I have the, the raw elements of this track and it sounds corporate enough that you can almost see the presentation when you listen to this kind of music and this kind of uh, uh, 
textures, if you will, because I'm with this kind of tracks, what I'm looking for is for textures more than anything as a whole. And when it comes down to composition of corporate music, I'm looking for that uh, guitar parts, like I said, those dotted guitar riffs. And I want to make sure that I have that kind of like uh, feeling, okay, that is it's background music. I can't stress that enough. This is supposed to sound like background music. So that's the aim here. And uh, try to make it as... Uh, I try to not be cheesy, if you will, if, if that's such a thing. Uh, but I do believe that you can make uh, corporate music without sounding cheesy. So uh, just make sure that you work uh, your way around if you're doing uh, this kind of track with samples and and uh, and plugins and fake uh, instruments. Make sure that you are very careful how do you uh, program them. So anyways, guys, thanks a lot for all the love and support. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. If you're new to stock music licensing or music licensing in general, you can download my guide. There's a free guide, link in the description. And as always, rock and roll, and here's to your success. Mm -hmm.